Hi, I'm Randall Heyman, a mathematics academic. Welcome to my Corona Help playlists, where I make quick turnaround videos to help educators, parents, grandparents, and students. If you'd like me to make a video for you, then just uh, put a comment below any of my videos, or if you like, you can email me at coronahelpmathematics at gmail.com. So this is for Lydia from the UK, and um, we're doing some work on compact sets. Okay, so what is a compact set? We discussed this in the last video. Today I want to do a problem. So uh, a set is compact if every open cover has a finite subcover. Now, if this doesn't make sense to you, go and have a look at the previous video that I did on this. There's other definitions of compactness. Um, a set is compact if it's closed and bounded, for example. But uh, we're going to insist today that we use this definition here. Okay, so the problem is uh, prove 0, 1 is not compact. Okay, before we start this, I just want to make this comment. If you're asked to prove that something is compact, this is a pretty hard proof to, to use because you have to show that for every open cover, there's a finite subcover. Often you'll use this definition if you're trying to prove something like, I don't know, the union of two compact sets is compact or something like that. However, when you're asked to prove that something is not compact, as we have here, well then, um, then it's not quite as difficult because all we've got to do is come up with, we've got to dream up an open cover uh, such that there's no finite subcover. So, so uh, this is an easier process in some respects. Okay, but having said all of that, these open covers and finite subcovers are not easy, so don't expect that you'll pick them up uh, really easily. Okay. So I'm actually, this is uh, from a book by Bert Mendelssohn. I, I mean, I found this problem. So it's a nice problem uh, in his book, Introduction to Topology. Okay, so let uh, un equal one on n, one minus one on n, for n equals three, four, five. So this is our open cover. So it's a set, it's a collection of um, open sets that cover um, zero one. So let's just explore that a little bit before we go on. So um, we observe that zero one, this set is a subset of the union of all the UNs from N equals K to infinity. Why is that? Let's have a look. Let's draw, let's draw a diagram. I might do this properly. I'll even get a ruler out, make this nice and pretty. Uh, let's draw a line from about there. So there's our, there's our uh, real line. Uh, so let's put zero here and one here. So now let's write here um, u3. So u3 is equal to, well, I'm using this up here, it's the open set from one third to two thirds. So I'm going to approximately write that in. Uh, that will go from here to here. U4, one quarter, uh, whoops, one quarter, it'll be one quarter, three quarters. So let's write that in. So it'll go like that, like that. And, you know, U100 will equal one, it'll get the open set from one hundredth to 99 hundredths. 
So that will go from about here to about here. So I hope you can see that when we take an infinite number of these, dot, 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 then it will cover um, um, 0, 1. If you're having a bit of trouble with that, then think, um, try and find an element of um, 0, 1 that is not an element uh, of uh, one of a uh, u n for some n for some n greater than or equal to three. So you know, for example, uh, one. Let's say the point one millionth. Well, that point is so that's right down here somewhere. That's right there somewhere. One millionth. Well, that's an element of the set U uh, one million and one. So I'll leave you to go through that. So you can show basically that any point between zero and one, excluding the point zero and one, is in fact in one. In fact, it's in in, in an infinite number of these sets. Okay. So we do have it. So so uh, we're doing this in black. The solution. I think we are. We observe it at dirt, so that's it. So n equals k to infinity of u k. Uh, so u n. What am I doing? Oh, I say n equals k there. That's not right. Let's make this n equals three, and this will be the same. So what I'm saying is this union of all these sets. All these k k uk's. Um, so this is k equals three to infinity of. Let's rip that all out and start again. The union of the uk's between k equals three and infinity is an open cover of zero one. Okay, so now we've got to show that there's a finite subcover that won't include a point. So um, so I suppose to create a finite uh, subcover, there must be some say so let's call it big N um, oh actually uh, there must be some what I'm trying to show here is that there's a largest set um, I could say largest uh, oh yeah there must be some maximum value K Actually, I've been using k and n interchangeably here, haven't I? That's not very good. What am I doing? n. Everything's in there. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. So n, n. Okay. Everything's in there. So there must be some maximum. Uh, if we've got a finite subcover, there must be some maximum value of n. So what I'm saying here is that if I take if I take this union, which is an infinite, there's an infinite number of sets. I'm only going to take some of them because it's got to be a finite subcover. Finite is the important word here. Okay, so if I take a finite number, there must be a largest one. So, so I'm going to let, uh, let's let begin be this maximum value. Well, then, um, I think you'll see that one on n, the number one on n, begin, is not an element of the union of all, all of them up to um, to n, u little n. Sorry, we've got big u's and little u's and big n's and little n's here. 
So, so what I'm saying is if we took just, let's just say we took a finite sub cover of this one here and this one here. Well, you can see that, that this number here, one quarter, is not included in the union of these two. So one quarter, which is an element here, is not an element of that finite subcover. And you can extend that argument, as I said, as you can see in this argument down here. So, um, no finite subcover exists. Um, so, therefore, zero one is not a compact set. So I hope that's helped Lydia and anybody else who's watching. If you've got any questions, let me know. Uh, and any branch of mathematics that you're interested in, I'm happy to have a go at helping you out. Contact me either via my email address, coronahelpmathematics at gmail.com, or you can put a comment under any of my videos.